This second day of the Asian Financial Forum in Hong Kong is really all about financial innovation, regulation and climate change. We're hearing from Richard Sander, who's the guru on climate change in Chicago, and we're also hearing from others. But first, let's look at some of the highlights, starting with the chairman of the Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission, Eddie Fong. Regulation is no substitute for discipline. Uh, or, you know, we need all the stakeholders in the marketplace to work together. Uh, you know, the uh, investors, the market participants who are uh, preparing the products, and all, of course, you know, the regulators should also play a part. This is a free liquid tools. Innovation should not threaten financial stability. First premise. Second premise. Innovation should not undermine investor protection. We really need to um, seek a fine balance between these two. Uh, I think in the crisis uh, period, there might be a tendency of uh, over-regulating. And uh, I think uh, we should wait for a while to, to reach this balance. But in China, I think uh, uh, we are in the period of uh, further liberalizing the market. Uh, back to the question of investor protection, I think uh, uh, both the regulator and the, the investor should do their due parts. I thoroughly believe that China can become the preeminent market for trading emissions and air and water and substantially improve not only the quality of its life, but the quality of the planet's life. The talk of sanctions due to some political reasons, not economic factors, is harmful to the world economy. At the time of crisis, we have to think of more of cooperation, dialogue, participation, not to impose political agenda on the economic situation of the world. Encouragement of consumption has been given an equal sign with patriotism, but that is against the thousands of years of values of the Chinese. Now, wastage is equivalent to patriotism. There is a contradiction there. What is the pro problem there? Is it the media? Is it the central government? Is it the people? Consumerism has been equal, made equal as patriotism. There is something wrong. I think we should be encouraging raising of living standards and not uh, consumerism. the country's ability to address bottlenecks will be one of the key determinants of sustaining a rapid pace of economic growth. Uh, around the world, historically, the development of vital national infrastructure has been typically financed and constructed by governments. But in China, the scope for foreign participation and private sector participation is improving. Now, we know we need trillions of yuan in the future years to achieve China's ambitious plans to build out the railway system, power grids, etc. I believe this will serve as a catalyst uh, to help China develop more sophisticated financial markets, financial instruments, and as a result, attracting greater foreign investment. Now, speaking as a representative of, a banking, of the banking sector, I believe this is not only going to be a good development for China, but also this will diversify the universe of available investments for foreign and domestic investors alike. I believe that uh, to achieve our objective on sound infrastructure development, we need to increase our effort and build tangible partnerships, including rest of private sector. The role of the private sector will become the more and more important for the regional infrastructure development. In this regard, I think an important event like Asian Financial Forum and today will be great beneficial to discuss these issues and attract the interest of the private sector. I believe that the government has to uh, provide more money to uh, leverage the, uh, the, the, the situation so that the private infrastructures come or they are financed by themselves. 
So irrigation, uh, rural infrastructure, for example, they are not sexy for the, infra for the investor. So the government has to pay for themselves. But the second type, the infrastructure, which is economically feasible and financially feasible, this is the one that we have to, uh, uh, to do our best to attract private investment to come. And certainty and clarity is, is two keywords that uh, being you know, asked by our dear uh, investor so that the uh, regulatory framework, I guess, has to be very transparent, accountable, and also give a lot of uh, easiness in doing business in one country. We are looking at some sort of sch financing schemes working with Ch Chinese financial institutions to try to help uh, industry and small business retrofit uh, to use water more efficiently. Uh, we've done similar things with energy efficiency that have been quite successful to date in creating a new asset class for the banks and a new way of financing uh, based on the cash flow savings that a, that a company would experience either from reducing their energy footprint or hopefully in the future reducing their water footprint. The Chinese government and the chi China as a country enjoy a tremendous advantage because in the banking system we have 8.5 trillion US dollars worth of savings which remain untapped a lot of this money could be lent out in the form of infrastructure loans. But also, speaking earlier about the bond market, uh, there's a lot of need for institutional investors, such as a social security fund, insurance companies, to buy long-term bonds, which are actually lacking in China. So if infrastructure bonds are um, available in the Chinese market, they could not only finance long-term infrastructure projects, they also provide a channel for institutional investors to invest in this new vehicle.